Okay, looking at page 13 of the 0 0.2 packet, uh, we can look at some solving equations. First one's a linear, uh, two linear expressions equation. Uh, we could distribute one half in, um, but actually we could even just multiply both sides of the equation by two. So that's two times a half cancels. Uh, and multiply this by two, so we get x plus four equals four x minus 12. Um, and then subtracting and adding, we would get 16 equals 3x, and x is equal to 16 over 3. Okay, moving on, we have a quadratic. Um, we'd like to think it might factor. So products of AC, which is 3 times negative 15, negative 45, uh, and adds to negative 2. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there are any integer values that satisfy that, so this is not factorable. Um, so that means our options are going to e be either use the quadratic formula or complete the square. So right here, I'll just do the quadratic formula. So I'll take negative b, which is negative negative 2, so 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 4, uh, minus 4 times AC, that's negative 45, um, all over 2 times A, so 6. Doing out this math, I would get 2 plus or minus uh, 4 times 45 would give me 180, so 4 minus 180, or sorry, minus negative 180, so 4 plus 180, so square root 184, all over 6. Uh, square root of 184. We'd be curious to know if that simplifies. Um, so we could try to prime factor this. So split it into 2 times uh, 92, which would be 2 times 46, which is 2 times 23. So I get a pair of 2s, so I can factor out a 2. Um, so I get 2 plus or minus 2 square root um, 46 all over 6. And then canceling common factors, I would get... Two, uh, sorry, 1 plus or minus square root 46 all over 3. So that could be my final answer. I'm going to do completing the square because I think that's valuable to review, so I'm going to do that down here. Um, complete the square. Okay, so our function or our equation was 3x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Uh, personally, my first thing I like to do um, is get rid of that 3. Uh, so you can factor it out, or in this case, we can actually divide it out. Um, so I'm going to get x squared minus 2 thirds x. 15 divided by 3 is 5, equals 0. Based on the structure, I'm going to do x squared minus 2 thirds x, and add 5 to both sides, equals 5. And I'm going to put a plus blank because I can add something to complete the square here. Geometrically, if I have an x squared, and this is going to represent a minus, so this is minus 2 thirds x, and that would mean I have dimensions x, x, and here would be negative 2 thirds, which technically should go back into the x squared, but whatever. Um, and if I wanted to complete the square and arrange this into a square, I need to chop this in half and bring half of it up here because that's going to give me x squared. Half of negative two thirds would be negative one third. So I would get negative one third x. Uh, and then here I would also have negative one third x. And then I need to complete this square because I'm set up now so that my dimensions are x minus a third, x minus a third. So I should have x minus one third squared, which would be delightful. Um, but first I need to actually fill in this part of the square. And so what do I need to add to fill that in? Well, that's a negative a third times a negative a third, which is positive one ninth. So I add in one ninth here. And if I do it on one side of the equation, I should do it on the other side of the equation. Whole point of completing the square was to make this a perfect square trinomial, which will factor down into x minus a third squared. So I can make it x minus one third squared equals five plus one ninth. Five is the same thing as nine times five, 45 ninths plus one ninth. So I'm gonna get 46 over nine. Okay. 
Whole point of completing the square is because it is like boxing up a present, as I say. Here is my wrapper. So to get it, I need to take the square root, square root, and I take the plus or minus square root of both sides, um, leading me to have x minus a third equals plus or minus. Now, square root of 46 is just the square root of 46. We checked a minute ago, and that doesn't simplify. But the square root of 9 is 3 because I can take square root of 46 over 9, and because it's division, I could say this is square root of 46 over square root of 9, which is square root of 46 over 3. Uh, then I add 1 third to both sides, so I get x equals 1 third plus or minus square root of 46 over 3, which is also the same thing as 1 plus or minus square root of 46 over 3. Uh, that might look familiar, because when we did this by the quadratic formula a moment ago, um, Voila, we got that. So I love this uh, visual method here. If we imagine um, making a rectangle out of this piece of the function and then filling in, or not function, equation, expression, whatever, uh, then we need to fill in 1 ninth to complete the square, so we add it to both sides. Um, and then we're created a perfect square with dimensions x minus 1 third, so it's x minus 1 third squared and then we square root that whole thing. Um, and all of it's just very beautiful. And that's literally where the quadratic formula comes from anyways. Um, it's just the completed square, uh, just in general form, A, B, C. So that's a good little refresher. Hopefully you like that. Um, the other ones I think should be a little more straightforward. So like here we just have zero product property. Uh, states that if we have a bunch of things e multiplied that equal zero, individually they could equal zero, so x equals zero, uh, x plus one could equal zero, so x could be negative one, x minus three equals zero, so x equals three. Uh, so that's our solution set here. Next one, uh, we have a cubic polynomial. Um, honestly, this is more of an exercise, like it just happens to factor by grouping, so it's good to sort of practice with our algebraic techniques. So if I s group this into two sets of two terms, I can kind of see I have 1 and 4 compared to 3 and 12, so this commonality of ratios between first and second term in each group. Uh, so if I factor out the GCF of the first two terms, I'm left with x minus 4. Uh, if I factor out the GCF of negative 3 from the second two terms, I would get x minus 4. So I get x squared minus 3, x minus 4 equals 0. Um, so that's just sort of practice. Factoring by grouping it happens to work when the problem is really made for it to work. Um, but it's good to practice. And then by ZPP, zero product property, x minus 3 equals 0, or sorry, x squared minus 3 equals 0, meaning x squared is 3, or x equals plus or minus square root 3, um, or x equals 4 is our other solution. All right, next one we have 2x plus 3 to the 2 thirds equals 4. Um, number of ways to do this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just raise all both sides to the 3 halves power. I'm going to raise this to the 3 halves power. Um, so this cancels, leaving with 2x plus 3, and then 4 to the 3 halves. Now, 4 to the 3 halves um, is just 8. Uh, you could think of it as 2x plus 3 equals 4 to the 1 half to the third, and 4 to the 1 half is the square root. Um, so 2 to the third, and then we get 2x plus 3 equals 8. 2x is 5. x is 5 over 2. Um, yeah, so if you want to deal with the exponent, even if it's a rational exponent, we can just raise it to the reciprocal. Um, and that should take care of things. Uh, sometimes you have to be careful with plus or minuses as far as this goes. Um, actually, it's possible that this is one of those cases. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, because x equals 5 halves is a solution. However, um, because we square rooted both sides effectively, like this denominator of 2 is kind of like we square rooted both sides, right? When you raised 4 to the 1 half, that's like the square root of 4. Um, but that means that we really ought to have done the plus or minus um, root. So we could have a second equation that would have been 
2x plus 3 equals negative 8, um, and then 2x equals negative 5. Nope, that's not good math. 2x equals negative 11, uh, and x equals negative 11 over 5. Um, and just to highlight that, I'm going to pull us back down here for a second. Um, say I had, this is completely separate from number 3. Um, if I have 2x plus 3 to the 2 thirds, well, this could be equivalent to thinking about the cube root of something, 2x plus 3, squared equals uh, 4 in this case. So if something squared equals 4, that something, well, 2 squared would give us 4, but negative 2 squared is also 4. So when I take that square root, that's the whole thing behind this big plus or minus. Like when I square root uh, both sides here, I need to make sure I'm doing cube root of 2x plus 3 equals plus or minus root 4, aka cube root of 2x plus 3 is 2, well, plus or minus 2. And so that's your two possibilities of what the cube root of 2x plus 3 is. Um, equals 2, then cubing both sides, I get 2x plus 3 equals 8, and then x equals 5 halves. Uh, comparatively, if I use the other one, the negative 2, cube root of 2x plus 3 equals uh, negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8. Um, cubing both sides, sorry. And then 2x plus 3 equals negative 8, and then x equals negative 11 halves. So it's the whole idea is this, anytime we're actually like, that's effectively sort of like squaring to the 2 thirds as an even exponent. Um, so we could have this plus or minus thing going on here. Um, weird though that may seem. All right, kind of encroaching on number six's space. Hopefully it's not too hard. Of 1 eighth plus 5x over x plus 2 equals 5 halves. Uh, first of all, let's get that 1 eighth and the 5 halves. These are both constants, so let's get those together. 1 eighth is um, not going to be easy to turn into halves, but 5 halves, we could make eighths. We could make that uh, 20 over 8 by multiplying by form of 1. Subtracting 1 eighth, we would get 5x over x plus 2 is actually equal to 19 eighths. Uh, and then we can rock and roll from here. Um, so we could say multiply both sides by 8 and get 40x. Multiply both sides by x plus 2 equals 19x plus 38. Subtract 19x, we will get 21x equals 38. x equals 38 over 21. Um, 38 does not have a factor of 3 or 7, um, so that's it. Number 7, I love number 7. Good practice with recognizing uh, commonal commonalities between numbers and bases with exponents. You could go ahead and use logs here, but why make life harder? I see that 25 and 1 fifth are both powers of 5. 25 could be written as 5 squared to the x plus 3. 1 fifth is 5 to the power of negative 1 to the 2x minus 1. Okay, so now I have a common base of 5. I can use the rule of exponents and say a power to a power. We just multiply. So 5 to the 2x plus 6 equals 5 to the negative 2x plus 1. Uh, if I have some base, in this case 5 to some power, is equal to that same base to some other power, well, those powers logically have to be equivalent. And if you really like going through the motions, you can take log base 5 of both sides and get the same thing. But honestly, those exponents have to be the same. So we can just go and say uh, 2x plus 6 equals negative 2x plus 1. Uh, swish and swap. We get 4x equals negative 5. x equals negative 5 over 4. Um, so that is good, well, and happy. Next one, we got 6 to the power of 3x minus 1 equals 10. Beautiful. So how do you get uh, things out of the exponent? What is our magic tool? It is the logarithm. So if I want to get this x out of the exponent, our only really good way is logs. Uh, changing the formula to logs, right? If we have b to the a equals c, then it follows that log base b of c equals a. Kind of our definition of logarithms. 
So if we rock and roll with that, then we can say log base 6 of 10 is equal to 3x minus 1. Um, log base of 6 of 10, we don't have a good way to evaluate, um, so I'm not going to. Uh, so I'll just do log base 6 of 10, then I'll add 1 to both sides, so plus 1, and then I'll divide by 3. And that is going to be equal to uh, x. And that's it. Uh, this one, we got an extra copy of ln hanging around. Get out of there, buddy. So ln 4x minus 5 equals 3 ln natural log, uh, also known as log base e of 4x minus 5 equals 3. So again, we're just going to use this right here. Uh, we're going to convert forms. Uh, technically, if you're really into it, you could raise e to the third and raise e to the log base, whatever, and then cancel stuff. Um, I just like to change forms. So I'm going to go e to the third power equals 4x minus 5. Solving for x is pretty simple now. Um, we'll go here. Uh, e cubed, add 5 to both sides, and then divide by 4, and we get x. And we are happy as can be. All right, last one we get. <laughs> we love e, apparently. Um, we're going to do some e. Uh, <laughs> as in the Euler's number, that kind of e. Yes. Uh, so we get e to the x over 2. Uh, let's divide away. It's really important here to isolate e to the x over 2. Um, you'll notice that like b to the a, oops, um, b to the a equals c. Like that's just some base to the power of a, and then we can put log base of that b. If you were to, and people sometimes are tempted to say, oh, log of base 2e of 11 equals x over 2. That would be wrong. Um, it's not a base of 2e. The only thing being raised to the power is the e. So I should be using log base e, and I can't convert that forms until I divide the 2. So that's really important. We have to isolate this base, isolate the base before we do any of this converting of forms. Um, so we can now say log base e of 11 halves equals x over 2. Log base e is um, ln, so I can say ln of 11 over 2, natural log, and then to isolate x, I would just multiply by 2 equals x. Uh, you could get all fancy and try to power rule this thing, um, and then like you could also write it if you want it as x equals ln of 121 over 4, if you were to bring this to the exponent there, um, but you don't have to. We can just do two times that, and we'll call it good. Uh, okay, so that wraps up our little solving equations, page 13. Very nice. Um, hope this was useful and helpful. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know.